look at our Pacific heritage and even um, our Indian heritage, creative arts has played a huge role. Uh, Pacific people were known for creative arts, you know, with their paintings, with their tattoos, with uh, all the song and dance, you know, when we, they, were, they had song and dance for almost everything, for weddings, for funerals, for birth, for, you know, somebody going out fishing, somebody going out for war, really for everything, there was something. And then somehow, I feel, in a sense, for, in the name of development, there was a lot of modernization, and, you know, people don't have the time to practice these things. So a lot of these traditional practices are somewhere along all of that shift and move, these traditional practices are dying out, and creative arts are one of them. project that I uh, carried out was uh, advocacy training and the facilitator on the first day told us like you know you have to put a goal that you're going to do this thing by the end of the week and you have to deliver it and I was like okay you know what by the end of the week I'm actually going to come up with a name and actually say that yes I'm doing this youth group it's going to be creative arts youth group and I'm actually going to do this and now like three years now the group that I have we have 11 members and we've done a couple of projects we managed to scoop two awards so like now when you talk about act as a youth group, a lot of people know who we are. And had I not in that week been like, okay, yes, this is what I'm going to put as my week's task, we wouldn't have been here at all. With act, I think the first uh, and the main priority that I had was getting young people to be more involved in creative arts and sort of getting the communities to understand that creative arts is important and it's, uh, it's not just about acting and entertainment because around mm -hmm. that time because we were sort of in the lead up to the elections when we formed the group there were a lot of protests happening and people were getting arrested a lot of young people got arrested for protesting about what was happening about the constitution about elections and all and i was thinking there needs to be a way that i can protest without getting arrested and so for every social issue that we were talking about we would incorporate the theatre team, so whether it's they come and do a song and dance and then we talk to the students about, okay, so what does what do you think this particular piece was about and then we try to draw from there. But um, over the years we've managed to um, work with other young women and uh, empower them enough so they can come and share their stories. And <clears throat> each time we have these spoken words events, we have at least one or two people performing for the first time. So I feel that's making an impact. If nothing else, like in terms of audience, if they're not understanding what we're saying, at least we're empowering other young women to use creative arts to tell their stories. And you know, they're getting comfortable in doing that. You see, you can, if somebody says, oh, so what have you done? If nothing else, you can say, well, I've done this. Right now, like if we sit down and count how many young people have performed for the first time because of our event, we can give you a number. We can say, this person, this person, this person. And I think for us, that's something concrete. And when these people, you know, like later on, they're like, oh yeah, we performed there, or oh, I wrote this blog, or oh, I recorded this video, and I'm like, great, great, keep doing it, keep doing it.